I don't believe in them psychics. And then there was this man that came up to me and said, did you have Lucky Charms for breakfast today? And I said, oh, I did have Lucky Charms for breakfast. Oh, my God, you're an amazing psychic. <laughs> I really believe she visited him. He just wants you to know he knows how much you loved him. And everybody in the room, the jaw just Knowing dropped. exactly what like someone needs to hear. That she called you, you know, like nobody really knew. It was incredible. And then I was like, oh my God. There's more after this life. This is Ripple Road. All right, Ripple Road. Welcome back. I'm Scott, and it's going to be an episode where I'm breaking the format. It's just me this time, episode 10. We made it. And uh, no stories from people. It's all Scott this time. I'm coming up on the high ground on this one. Look, I listened to episode 9 again because that's what I do. I re-listen, you know, after I've uploaded it and it's too late to edit and take it down. (laughs) Elise comes in and she was like, yeah, I listened to it. And I'm like, I know. It sounds dark, right? It sounds negative. She's like, well, I mean, it kind of sounds like you don't love your job. And I'm like, you're right. It totally does. I was hoping to get like a little honest and raw balance between, you know, like bringing the sunshine and roses, but then maybe I don't curate that image of me. Maybe I I can open up and be like authentic and honest. And what ended up spilling out of me when I turned the microphone on was like, ah, these people this, those people that, no one's ever going to understand my conditions and what a horrible ride home and what, wow, man. That stuff must have been pent up inside of me. It came flying out my mouth like, Hey man, I thought you said there was going to be stories. I just hear a lot of yimmer yammering and complaining. Bring on the stories. (laughs) It's the damn coronavirus. Ah, it's getting to me. The cabin fever. It's getting to me. (laughs) And the other thing is that's worth pointing out here is that When I'm doing those in-home readings and, like, I'm in the groove, man, I'm in, like, a trance-like headspace. And if we get to talking about it right after a reading, it sort of records it back into my wakeful consciousness, and then I can kind of remember it, you know? But the thing is, if we don't talk about it, which nine times out of ten, the reading runs long, you know? It's very emotional, it's very thorough, nobody's expecting it to run that long. And people have told me, like, you know, you don't need to go that long. And I'm like, I know, but I, I kind of can't help it. Like, I, I just lose track of it. Like, spirit sees an opportunity, and they run with it, and I just let it go until I'm out of steam. So by the time I'm done, it's usually kind of exhausting, you know? And everyone's like, all right, well, thanks for coming. I'll see you later. And I'll run into people at the grocery store, and they'll be like, oh, hey, Scott. And I'm like, yay. You? How are you? How are you doing? I, I read you, right? And they're like, yeah, it was two weeks ago. I'm like, you're kidding me. Like, you don't remember? You know, my brother with the blue Chevy and the and the heart attack and the... Mm, so I can't believe you don't remember. I'm like, who are you again? <laughs> like, it is gone. Selective amnesia. You know, when you're doing this job for a living, it could be like four or five times a week. You're driving all over the place. You knock, knock, knock. You walk in. You do the reading. You you leave. You drive back home. I don't remember the stuff that I said when I was in this deep trance kind of channeling state of my mind. I, I can't bring that back into my wakeful consciousness. Like sometimes on the ride home, I'll call Elise and be like, oh my gosh, these people... It was crazy. You should have seen, like, I, oh my gosh, I brought through this one. And, you know, like it could just be like crazy stories that I feel like I got to tell somebody this one, you know. And then I kind of remember it. So I'm thinking on this episode, I'm going to counterbalance out the episode nine that I was kind of humiliated by, to be honest with you, when I listened to it. Maybe you didn't get that. Maybe you just thought it was nice that I was being um, open and honest, but like, Look, you can't do readings from that headspace. That's not going to work. You know what I mean? Like, you can't walk into a house and be like, oh, they took the photographs off the wall. I can see the outline of the dust from the the squares on the wall. Like, oh, these people are skeptics. That actually did happen one time. I'm like, yo, guys, I could see where the frames were. Like, really? You're going to be that skeptical towards me? But look, you can't go in and, like, be like, oh... 
you know, what a punch in the gut. These skeptics, this is going to be like a hard, energetic hump to get over. No! You got to come in with like the, the laughter and the positivity and the smiling. I'm going to steamroll over your skepticism and I'm going to make something wonderful happen by just force of will, force of my positivity and my attitude, right? So like, I don't think I struck that tone in the last episode. So this one, I'm going to strike that tone. That's why I started out like, you know, I'm going to do uh, my own stories, for this one. Do we have to include client stories every single time? I don't know if I need to do that. Like, you, you've heard them all if you've listened to all the episodes up till now. These are all people that I've read, you know? It's pretty awesome hearing their stories because I have no recollection, you know? It's like, wait, I said that? Oh, crazy. I don't even remember saying that. And here it like sticks with people. Them, some of these readings uh, that people are talking about throughout the different episodes are from readings, you know, maybe a year ago, maybe two years ago, but some of them are 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and they still remember. <laughs> I don't remember two weeks ago. It's crazy. But, uh, but there's a couple of stories that I kind of remember. The ones that stick out, you know, call them the X-Files or something. You kind of get used to bringing through your sister, your brother, your mother, your father, you know, your cousin, your grandparents, your aunt and uncle, your next door neighbor, this guy you used to work with. Like, they're all unique in their own way. But after 10 years of doing readings, uh, the ones that stand out have to be like kind of unique to me. Like for you, maybe you've never had a reading before and that really stands out. For me, I'm doing it five, six times a week sometimes, you know, it's crazy. So in this episode, I'm going to share my stories. How do you like that? This is going to be a unique one. Episode 10, you know, nice round number. Take a break from uh, all the different recordings of people talking about their reading experience and talk about my reading experience. Why not? And a good place to start out with this, uh, I got to paint this picture for you, right? Like you hire me from, from your, uh, you know, side of the equation. You're sitting with your friends and family. These are all like people you get along with, people you jive with, you know, there's like a chemistry, you're going to invite your friends over, whatever, and then you're sitting there talking about it, and you're all excited, and then I come walking in the door, like, wouldn't it be cool if everybody in the world was more like you? It doesn't work that way, man. There's so many different personalities. Each person thinks that they're the normal one, right? I think I'm the normal one and I talk to spirits, right? That's totally abnormal to most people and I get it, right? Now, not every personality on planet Earth is also thoughtful and aware about how they're being perceived. They just are themselves, you know what I mean? They just, they just assume that they're normal and that their version of normal is everyone's normal. But for me, walking into homes again and again and again... I'm going to tell you, boy, there's a lot of different kinds of personalities on planet Earth. Let me tell you what, you know, so the best thing that I can do is approach it with a smile, humor, relax. I, I really do take notice to uh, the way the energy holds up in my body. If I'm tense, then you're going to be tense. If I like relax my shoulders down, if I like work on my inner energy, right? Like I kind of get that vibe going through me where it's like relaxed, you know, I'm not holding up any tension or emotional issues. I walk in feeling completely at ease, then it's going to kind of dominate that space, right? I want to take that energy that's within me of being relaxed, easy, open, positive, smiling, laughing, enjoying it, love, you know, and I want to dominate the space with that energy. But, but walking into some places, I'm like, what the hell kind of crazy vibe you got going on here? You know how many times I've walked into a space and there's like a dog that they're like, oh no, Sheba, uh, watch out. Uh, they, he, they, oh, he doesn't like guys. He doesn't like men. He was a, you know, a, a rescue dog. And I'm like, okay. And then Sheba comes up and I'm like, who wants some loving? You want some loving? You're a good boy. You're a good boy. And they're like, wow, I've never seen Sheba act like that with anybody. I'm like, because it's my boy. You know, it's that energy. I'm like the dog whisperer, you know? So here's one for you. I went to a reading one time. It was just me and this woman, man. She had hired me for a one-on-one. -on -one. We pulled the dining room chairs into this room and we were sitting face to face like uh, who wants to be a millionaire style, you know, it's just me and her. Um, but the whole home 
reeked of weed, man. She had like really hit the bong pretty hard before I showed up. I don't know. I guess she thought like she's hiring me to do this reading. So we're going to space out, man. I'm going to smoke some weed and we're going to talk to spirit guides and angels and aliens and we're going to get crazy, right? I guess that's what she thought because again... There's like 8 billion different realities occurring simultaneously on planet Earth. You know what I mean? She thought what she thought. Okay, fine. But now I'm walking in like, hmm, boy, that is, that is pretty far away from what I do. You know, like I'm trying to be like therapeutic and this lady's high as a kite, man, stoned off her gourd. So she's sitting there and she's grabbing her little, you know, support cat. It's this like long haired white Persian type cat. And the cat kept jumping out of her arms and running up to me. I'm trying to meditate. And the cat is like going around my leg, rubbing up its long hairs, coming off in the, in the air, <laughs> the hair everywhere. And she's like, princess, princess, no, princess, come here. And I'm like, it's okay. It's really fine. You know, like I'm meditating. I'm cool with animals, man. It's all right. I'm just going to do my thing. Just sit back and relax. And then the cat would come back up. Oh my God, princess, I've never seen her do this. She never does this with anybody. Princess, come here. Come on, princess. And I'm like, it's cool, man. It's cool. You just got to give me like five, ten minutes of silence to just relax. And I'm okay, here we go. Just let the cat be. I'm going to breathe. And then the cat jumps up on my lap. She's like, princess. I'm like, lady, could you not smoke weed before I show up? What kind of crazy shenanigans is this? Oh, God. There was one time I'm like upstairs in this loft space that I had selected for the reading because of the way it held energy in the room. And I thought, this is going to be a good room. So we'll all sit in here. Well, they're like, you know, um, Bowser has to come up with us. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. You can bring the dog up. I'm dog friendly. So I'm sitting there meditating and I hear the dog claws, you know, on the hardwood floors in the back of my chair and sniffing around at my shoes. I'm like, this dog about to make off with my shoes. <laughs> like, you know, he's sniffing. I'm like, it's cool. Just relax and go in. And I'm breathing and meditating. And oof, is that dog farting? Like, man, that is pungent. No, the dog took a shit under my chair. <laughs> well, I'm meditating. I mean, it was stanky, man. And they're like, oh my God, did he fart? And I'm like, I think it's more than a fart. And then I got up and looked and yup, there's a big old pile of Marmadukes right there under my chair. Like I'm trying to break through, <laughs> you know, Nana and Papa from the spirit realm that your dog's taking a deuce under my chair. <laughs> like, come on. There's this one time I show up. Uh, it's a local reading for me. I go over, it's like maybe 15 minute drive or something. Uh, a house with six people again, you know, going to do this reading. And there's this um, like a beagle. Like one of those like uh, like big old sloppy dogs with the floppy ears, you know, uh, kind of uh, the belly's almost dragging on the floor. I'm a beagle. I'm a beagle dog, you know, so fine. That's cool. Dogs love me, man. They sniff around me. They love the energy. See, my thing is don't worry about the dog. Animals love the energy of the room. When I'm channeling, I bring in this energy that dog will lay in the center of the floor and pass the heck out, man. I mean, out like a lamp. Because that energy, they, the animals love that energy. And I try to tell people, like, probably best if you just let the dog in. Unless you got, like, a little yippy dog that says, I love people. Oh, my gosh, there's people here. Then you're like, yeah, all right. You're going to need to, you know, care for the dog at, like, a separate location or something. So this beagle dog, you know, he's a little bow wow guy. He's up on me. He's trying to sniff around. I'm like, it's cool. It's cool. So the owner of the dog is like, oh, I can't concentrate this dog. I know the dog is bothering you. I'm like, no, no, it's cool. So I had pulled the chair into the center of the room and it's like a couch and some chairs where everyone else is sitting in like a semicircle. Well, behind me near the front window are a bunch of totes. Like, I guess um, they were putting away holiday decorations or something. And there was some totes still there that they hadn't put away. So they're stacked up there, you know. Well, the dog had managed to get up on the totes and was behind my chair and like reaching out in the air to me, like wanted to get to me so badly. There was this like Titanic movie, Celine Dion, my heart will go on moment where the dog is just like near, far, reaching my paw to get Scott. And the owner's just like flipping the shit, right? I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> 
so we're doing the reading and she takes the dog and she moves the dog back into the kitchen in the laundry room where there's like a little doggy fence and she puts it back there. So I'm like, you know, I'm in my zone. I'm like, is there an aunt like our Ruth? Uh, not Rosie. I think it's like Ruth. Yeah, my Aunt Ruth. And then you hear... <laughs> Everyone's like, I'm so sorry, the dog. I'm like, it's all right. It's all right. I think it was like a Ruth or something. <laughs> the lady starts getting the shock collar and she's buzzing the dog. Every time I'm like, yeah, so like Ruth is with... Does she have a son that passed in like a motorcycle accident? I'm like, lady, are you shocking your dog? Don't shock your dog. God dang it, man. You know, a lot of people that hire me, what they think I do, they think I'm in it the way they're in it, you know? So there's like some spiritually minded people that think like, ah, oh, Scott Henry, he's like a psychic medium. He's one of us, right? Like, I remember once I got hired, uh, it was like maybe an hour drive. Um, you know, the booking was there. They had paid their deposit. It's like, I don't know, like the day before the reading now. And I'm looking at my calendar like, oh, I got to drive up there tomorrow. Okay. And I got this bad vibe. Now, I don't usually get that kind of vibe that early on. If I got a bad vibe, it's usually like as I'm approaching your house, you know, like an hour away, maybe uh, 10 minutes down the road, I'll start to feel it, you know, that's where I'll get the vibe. But this was like a full day before. I'm like, man, that's weird. I better trust my gut on this one, you know. So I called up and I'm like, I'm going to try and feel this lady out and see like why I'm getting a bad vibe, you know. So I called her up and I'm like, I know we got an appointment tomorrow, but um. I don't know. I think I have to cancel. I'm just getting a funky vibe. Maybe it's not a good fit. Like maybe something bad's going to happen. We just have to honor that feeling. And she's like, there's no way anything bad could happen. We are totally in control of this energy. I don't know what that is. You just have to shake that off. We're, we're so excited. We're so open minded. I'm like, I don't know. Something's just hitting me in the gut funny. She's like, well, here's what we're thinking. Maybe you know, we won't do it this way, but I'll tell you, we are um, a new branch of this coven. So I'm like, coven? What is she talking about? She's like, yeah, it was like this big um, uh, Wiccan coven that we broke off from and we're doing our own thing now. So we got this house and we have this room set aside as our spell room. I'm like, did she just say spell room? And, and, and so we have it all set up um, with the geometric forms and everything. And we're going to set you right in the center of our like casting area and we'll do a reading like so but um i don't know why you would get anything weird because we're all witches of the white light and i'm like did this lady just say witches of the white light like hold up <laughs> you know uh so look and i'm not saying that i'm accusing you know any kind of wiccan people out there of being dark i'm just saying don't put me in your spell casting room you know what i'm saying like it's a it's a um, a push and pull. I'm trying to walk into your space and bring happy jolly Scott energy, and you're over here like you're gonna pull down the goddess uh, Gaia and Earth Venus and all this. Like, whoa, man, where are we going? This is like different dials on the FM frequency band, man. We're we're going into some other energy here. Uh, that's not where I operate from, you know? People that have like meditation rooms set aside, they've got crystals all around the room and like uh, pictures of angels and stuff. And they're like, yeah, this is my dedicated meditation room. No one's allowed in here. You're the first person that I've had come in here other than me in like six months. And we're all going to sit in here because it's nothing but beautiful energy. And I'm I'm like coming in here and I'm like, eh, there's the Archangel Michael is in here. You know that, right? Like you got Archangel Michael. Oh, that's like my patron saint. I pray to him every day. And I'm like, yo, it's for real. You for real got the Archangel Michael in here. Um, but I'm not going to be able to bring through like regular folk. You know, unless you want to get up and talk some biblical shit, like we can get into some lofty angelic realms here. But how do you validate that stuff? You know what I mean? Like now I'm coming through like talking in the tone of like somebody from the 1800s, like, 
Yes, we see that the participant is here and is enjoying their earthly life. Yes. And the, you ever hear like a channeler talking like that? Yeah, they're channeling like way up high masters, you know? I'm not attuned to that. So let's not sit in your meditation space. Can we just hang out like where you watch TV? You know, the TV room almost always works because all the couches and chairs are aimed at the TV. So I don't got to move a lot of furniture. I just set my chair up in front of the TV. Bingo. <laughs> like, can we just do it there? Because I'm attuned to reading regular people in a regular vibe, you know? I'm not trying to blast off into these angelic realms. We don't even have to go into, like, the super spiritual people. Just regular people here, guys. Just regular people. There's different personalities. And here's what I mean. So some people hire me, they're already open to it, right? They've been read by other mediums. Maybe they trust what their brother and sister told them about that reading they had a couple weeks ago. And they're like, yeah, they wouldn't lie to me. So they're open and friendly. I walk in with my relaxed shoulders. They have relaxed shoulders. I smile, they smile. We're good. You know what I mean? I don't got to do a lot of work on them to get there, you know? What the skeptics will hear is that he's cold reading you. He's reading your body language. He's listening to the pauses in your voice or the stutter. He knows when you're nervous. He knows he can monitor all that stuff. It's called cold reading. Some people participate in their reading by saying like, yes, that's my Uncle Jim. Oh, cool. What's he saying? Other people, I'll be like Uncle Jim and they just stare at me. And they're like, if I fold my arms and I get a poker face... There's no way he can cold read me, you know? It's cool, I still said Uncle Jim, so you know it's valid. But now, like, I don't really know if you're taking the message. Like, I go with what I'm getting, but eventually, if no one says shit, I'm moving on to the next thing. Because, look, I'm kind of insecure, you know? I want to deliver the best reading. There's that confidence thing again. So I go... Well, no one's taken Uncle Jim. We're going to move on, you know, and I push it aside. It's different types of mediums. You ever see John Edward do a reading? He gets hijacked. He'll be like, Uncle Jim, and then that's it. He's stuck with Uncle Jim for an hour, and he'll get angry. Like, I know I'm right. Who's Uncle Jim? You know, whereas me, if you don't say it, I'm like, bye-bye, Uncle Jim. <laughs> There's the door. Next. You know what I mean? Um, so it's kind of helpful when somebody participates. Here's, here's a good example. I remember being in, like, this big 30-person reading one time and I walk up to this lady and I go there's a young man in spirit it's like a son or like a nephew I feel like it's a son type vibe I don't know if you or somebody you knew lost a son and she's not really saying anything and then I'm like Swedish fish I don't know. He likes Swedish fish. He's saying, like, thank you for the Swedish fish. Thank you. She starts crying. And I'm like, can you can you take this? She goes, it's my son. I never told anybody this. Swedish fish was his favorite candy. And I snuck a box of Swedish fish under his arm in the casket. I'm like, that's it. Everyone in the audience is gasping. And I'm like, there you go. Now, look, if she never said that and just stayed crying, I'd be like, does that make sense? And she'd say, yes, that makes sense. And then I don't get any audience gasp. I mean, that's all right, I guess. I kind of like the audience gasp, though, you know? Why? Yeah, because we're having fun together. That's more entertaining to me, you know? So, like, it's kind of cool when there's a little more feedback, man, you know? We can run with it. We can get more messages. Here's one for you. I'm in a private reading, right? Six people. I went over to this guy sitting on the couch, and I'm like, you have a grandmother in spirit, you know? And, uh... I don't know. I'm trying to get more information on her to figure out which one. It's like on your mother's side, I think. Your mother's side of the family. Huh. She's peanut brittle. What's with the peanut brittle? Have you noticed that I have a food thing? Totally. Anyway, I'm like, there's a peanut brittle here. And um, that's a pretty specific type of candy, you know? I don't know. Does that mean anything? He's just sitting there. I'm like... All right, well, he's not taking it. So uh, in my mind, I'm like, all right, come on. What? Maybe it's a symbol. Maybe it symbolizes something like peanut brittle. Nah, man, she made it. She made her own peanut brittle. She. I don't know if... All right, so let's think. Somebody got, like, the recipe, you know? Somebody, is she trying to say, like, we lost the recipe? Nah, nah. Um, hmm. And I'm like... Maybe it's like symbolizes that she's in heaven and she can eat candy now. Maybe it's like a diabetic thing or something. So I'm starting to look at like, how did she pass? A kidney failure or something? No. Finally, the guy goes, my grandmother worked in a peanut brittle factory. <laughs> I'm like, 
buddy, why didn't you say that? Because I was about to run off onto kidneys. Next thing you know, I'd be on the other side of the room with somebody that's like, my father passed of kidney cancer, and then I'm over there and I've lost your grandmother. Thank God you spoke up because then we could figure it out. But like, that's crazy specific. The moment I said grandmother and peanut brittle, he should have said something, right? But people freeze up, man, because they don't, they don't know how to like re respond. They don't know what they're supposed to say, right? Other people say, don't say anything. Let the psychic say everything. Otherwise, you're going to mess him up. Don't steer him in any way. Don't let him do cold reading. We have to validate that he's on, you know. Here's another example for you, another food one. Go figure with the food things. Uh, this is early on. I remember going to a local reading. It was a husband and wife, older couple. So I go in, there is this woman in spirit that looks like a daughter to me, you know? But I don't know if it's a daughter or like a niece that they, like maybe she was close, like, hmm, this is going to be tough, right? I'm like, who is this girl, you know? And I could feel the tug, like there's some skepticism in the room. It's one of those difficult to get started readings. So I'm like trying to like describe her, like long hair. And again, like how many people do you know? Women with long hair, like how long? What's long? Like, you know what I mean? Like for a skeptic, they need more. So I'm trying to push and I'm like, licorice. I'm supposed to say licorice. I don't know, what's the thing, licorice. Feels important though. Feels like it's something she wanted to say. Like she's, she's, She's here telling me like licorice, like she's saying it like with um with like a force behind it, like like say this, like it's important. So, what's it's not just licorice that like she liked the candy. It's like more important than that. It's like this important thing. I don't know, man. I, I don't know what that is, but she, I can't get around it. I can't get around it. They're not giving anything away. They're just sitting there with their poker faces, you know. And I'm like. I'll just sit here, keep repeating licorice again and again. We can't do that, you know? And I didn't get too much else on her at first. So then I'm like, all right, we're going to have to go around. She's with this woman that's like your mother. And see, it feels like a grandmother to me. So I'm thinking this was your daughter, but I don't really know. Now there's this grandmother. Let me talk about her. Yada, yada, yada. Anyway, after the reading is over, the guy comes up to me and he says, so yeah, that was uh, my daughter. And I was like, oh, that's what I thought. Okay. And he says, before you got here, I, um, I prayed in my bedroom that if this is real, I need something from her that only she and I would know, that nobody else would know. And I just left it up to her. You, you got to come through with something that there's no way this guy could have figured it out. And he says... <laughs> I worked in the U.S. intelligence agency. I was a field operative. And uh, because of the type of work that I did when my daughter was in school, we told her, don't ever leave school with anyone, no matter what, even if they're dressed as a police officer, unless they give you the code word. And don't ever tell anyone the code word. And the code word is licorice. I mean... Man, now it makes sense why she felt like so important to say licorice. She heard her father asking and she knew nobody knows that because literally their safety depends on no one knowing that. That is extremely private. But he didn't say anything. And then I walked away like, gosh, I probably could have gotten a little bit more on her you know, before moving on to the grandmother, but he didn't say anything. So that's the way it works, you know. Let's stick with the food thing for one more story. You know, why not? There was uh, this one time I drove up two hours. It was like Cherry Hill area. So that's like a good two hour drive for me. Um, so I get up there. Uh, I show up. I usually show up like a little bit early because, you know, you never know about traffic or construction or things. So I just like to be punctual. So I get up there, everyone's sitting around the kitchen, which is cool. I like sitting around the kitchen for a couple minutes, like to kind of decompress and talk about things. You know, everyone's got the common questions. You know, when did you know you had this ability? Do you read people in public? And over the course of doing this as a job, you kind of have these like answers locked and loaded. You know what I mean? Like you're used to the regular shtick. You're like, I think this time I'll talk about my grandmother and do that story. I think this time I'll talk about the nightmares and tell that story. I think this time I'll talk about the Catholic thing and tell that story. Like, I've got every version of every answer and I would change it up, you know, just to like keep things interesting so I'm not literally a robotic repeating things every day, you know what I mean? But like, you know, people have the same common questions. So we stood around, I remember this one, uh, and they had like the fruit salad and the pepperoni and cheese spread and some mixed nuts and little mixed appetizers and we're sitting there and I'm, you know, picking and picking and, well, we thought we would do it in this room over here. I'm like, all right, let me go take a look. 
yeah, it's a little tight. I don't want to be knocking knees, but um, I think I think this will work. I think we'll be good. So uh, whenever you guys are ready, come on and sit down. Okay, so I tell him my spiel. I take my shoes and socks off. I'm going to meditate for like 10 minutes, and then we'll be off and running. So I sit there, and I'm quietly breathing, and I'm like five minutes into the meditation, and I'm hearing pineapple. Like, what the hell? It's like from this woman in spirit. And it feels like their mother, you know, but I'm not, I'm not all the way connected yet, so I can't, I don't want to start off wishy-washy, you know, I'd like to come out with some home run zingers, you know, so let's just do the meditation. Nah, it's this woman, it's like, it's the mother, it's the mother. Like, these must be like five or six siblings, because this mother feels connected to all of them. And she's saying pineapple, and she's saying pineapple, and I'm like... Okay, fine. Okay, fine. I'm like five minutes in the meditation. I open my eyes and I go, I don't know. There's a woman here that just, she needs me to say pineapple. And everyone's like, <gasps> they gasp. And I'm like, what's the pineapple thing? I mean, it felt pretty urgent. Felt like I had to say it to start the reading. Well, before I got there, they were all talking in the kitchen about their mother who had passed, and how are we going to make sure this guy is legit? You know, he could look us up on Google, he could hire a private detective, because that's cost efficient. But anyway, um, you know, uh, so they are like, we'll come up with a code word, you know, okay, mom, if you're here, say this word to this guy so we know it's real. And they're cutting up the fruit for the fruit salad, and someone's like, just say pineapple. He'll never say pineapple. Yeah, I did. So that was the gasp. I didn't know walking in. I just heard it in my head like you have to say pineapple, you know, crazy. Now I'm telling you this story. But look, if you ever hire me in the future, don't try to do the challenge because it only works sometimes. Like a week after that reading, I'm in a phone reading. Now, not everybody's in my local coverage area. Some people hear about me. They're a little bit too far of a drive. So I do a phone reading for them, you know, which works pretty good over the phone. I think it's the same kind of results. I get that some people like seeing me face to face, but whatever. Here's the thing. So I'm reading this guy on the phone and I'm going, you know, 45, 50 minutes in and I'm like, you know, wrapping it up. It was a good reading. I thought it was a good reading. And uh, he was lingering. I'm like, I could tell you want something more. Or is there another question? Is there something that we need to cover? You can you throw the name of someone in spirit at me. I'll see if I get them for you. You know, I could sense there's something more. And he goes, well, I was really hoping to hear this one thing. I had put it out before the phone call that if this was real to say this word and you never said it. And I'm like, yeah, that doesn't always work. You know, I, I get I get where you're coming from. Don't, like, you can't really do that because not everyone in spirit can respond that way. Maybe I'm just not attuned today to getting it. Like, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. So I go into telling him the story about, like, the week before where it actually did work. And I was like, yeah, I went up to this house and somebody did the same thing that you're doing. And I came right into the meditation. I had to say pineapple. And I'm like, who's saying pineapple? They want me to say pineapple. And he's like, yeah, that's it. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, I know it doesn't work. He's like, no, no, that's it. And I'm like, what's it? And he's like, pineapple. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, that's the word. And I'm like, no, no, that's, that's, that's the story from me a week ago. And he's like, no, you just said pineapple and that's the word. I'm like, no, the other people wanted me to say pineapple. And he's like, no, but you just, oh, that's really crazy. He chose pineapple too. Are you kidding me? Out of all the words, hold up a second. Did the, how, how? Just how? Like, explain these things to me, please, somebody. What the hell is that? You know, there's so many stories. I'm just rambling on the food things, but like Joanne has uh, been like my personal secretary with these readings for so many years. And then even when I started handling my own emails, because I thought it was more personable, we stayed in touch for years. She'd come to group readings and take tickets. So she could tell you stories that I've forgotten about. Over the years, like there's so many stories being passed between me and Joanne, me and Elise. Like, remember that one time, you know, this crazy thing happened. I'm like, I know. Being a medium is crazy at times, so I'm missing things, but they like to rib me because, um, you know, early on I thought I had a cool sense of style, man, and I wore my, like, sweater vest and my button-down shirts, and I had my hair looking all nerdy, and I had bought these white Dansko clogs. They're, like, shoes that, like, a chef would wear or a nurse or something. They're supposed to be orthopedic, you know, and I had um, dislocated my knee one time, and I thought, these orthopedic shoes will be cool, and they're kind of like disco, man, like, all white and, like, Saturday Night Fever, you know? So, you know, 
I, uh, I would wear them to readings, you know? People were like, please don't wear the clogs. Oh, God, it was bad. So um, I went to this one reading one time, and it's kind of like out in the hill country, you know? It was like a little grommet kids out there without their shirts on, playing in the dirt with their big wheels, and I walk up, you know? Like, I'm going to do this reading for this family. And um, then a lady answers the door, and she's like, you know, Tibby and Johnny, come on in, get in here. So we all went in, and I'm sitting down, and they looked at me, and the one kid, I don't know, five years old or something, is like, what are you supposed to be? <laughs> she was like, Timmy, don't say that. And I'm like, no, it's okay. I'm just, uh, I'm just here. To, uh, I'm a friend of your mom's, you know, like, whatever. What are you supposed to be? <laughs> oh, my God. You know, with all my conditions that would be passed around, sometimes I would show up and people would have these wacky things that their friends told them. Like, I went to one and they were sitting there eating before the reading and the, the lady goes, we were told you have to have hummus. <laughs> you were told I what? <laughs> yeah, we were told you have to have hummus. What kind of whisper down the lane school recess playground shit is this? <laughs> like, wait a second. I mean, hummus is all right and all, but like, I don't love it. I mean, it's great, but like, whatever. I must have eaten it at some reading and somebody's like, do you like it? It's homemade hummus. Do you like it? And I was like, yeah, being nice. Like, yeah, I love it. So then they told somebody like, he really likes hummus. And then the next person was like, you have to have hummus. And then the next person was like, he needs you to have hummus. <laughs> like, I don't need you to have hummus. <laughs> What kind of craziness is this? I went to one once and the drinking was happening. There was always drinking. Why does everybody want to hire me for like a psychic party with alcohol? You know, I'm like, guys, you can't drink. It messes it up, you know? Like the lady that was high with uh, Princess the Cat. Like, it messes up your frequency, man. I need us to get into this spiritual place. So I always struggled with the alcohol thing. And one time I showed up and they're drinking and I was like, ah, oh, guys, you know, you really can't be doing this. Did you see the email? And they're like, yeah, I thought you said you can't drink. And I'm like, why would I email you? you to tell you that I can't drink. Are you people crazy? You know what I mean? Like everybody's different, but like, come on, man, read the email, you know? Oh gosh. I went to one one time. It was six women that were all like drunk as skunks, man. They were getting up and down, leaving the room for chain smoking. Like I showed up, the one girl was getting married. She actually thought it was like a bachelorette party, which all right, like that's kind of cool. Like, I don't really get that much anymore at 45 years old, but back in my 30s, you know, I was in better shape and I was a dapper looking fellow with my sweater vest and everything. She must have saw me come in and was like, oh, you guys, you got me a stripper. And I'm like, that's so funny. I used to joke about this. Like, could you imagine? I'm like unbuttoning my shirt. I got my leg up on the armchair and I'm like, uh, uh. So is Mabel your grandmother? Uh, yeah, she's up in the light. Uh, uh, uh. Like, could you imagine stripper medium? That would be hysterical. <laughs> it's not hysterical. I do take my work seriously, guys. All right, I'm, I'm letting myself rip it a little too much on this one. But these are the jokes you got to make. You walk into people's homes and you never know what you're going to expect. You know, it's like crazy. I went to a reading one time. Uh, the guy told me to be there at four o'clock, right? So I come up, it's like an hour and a half drive. I go to the reading, I knock on the door, it's four o'clock. The guy answers the door in a nightgown. Like, I mean like, a, like a Charles Dickens, 1800s, twas the night before Christmas night shirt. You know, like it comes down, not even covered his knees. It's like he should be holding like a candle and like talking to like um, this ghost of Christmas past or something, you know? And I, I'm like, uh, I think I'm a little early. Uh, you know, he's like, no, four o'clock, come on in. I'm like, ah, oh, all right. I mean, where is everybody? Um, and he's like, oh, I told everybody else to be here at 630. I'm like, wait, what? But I'm here early then. He's like, no, I told you four o'clock. You're right. I'm like, okay, well, what's that all about? Like, and he's like, I thought we would just hang out for a while and talk. I'm like, ooh, I mean, I'm kind of ready to do the reading now. Like, there's a whole thing with my metabolism and sleep and coffee, and there's a whole thing. Like, I'm kind of ready to go in the zone now. But the guy is clearly, like, a little schmoozy. I'm not saying he's coming on to me, but it's there, you know? Eventually, like, his partner comes home, and he's like, Hello, well, now, who do we have here tonight? And he's like, Oh, this is Scott, the medium I'm telling you about. Oh, the medium. Oh, okay, and what are we doing this evening? And he's like, Well, we're going to have a reading, and we're going to... I'm like, This is starting to feel creepy, like, flies into the spider web type thing. Like, here you go. Like, oh, no friend of Hagrid has ever so willingly wandered into my nest. <laughs> so one of the time that people are showing up to do the readings, people bring in, like, cases of beer and stuff. I'm like... 
kind of party is this? Like, I can't get into the zone. But look, if you're out there listening, bro, like, you're a cool guy, man. I like your vibe. You're a friendly person. But, like, that situation caught me a little bit off guard, man. You got to understand, like, coming at it from my point of view, I was not expecting a guy in an 1800s nightshirt, you know? Who said anything about brotherly intercourse? All I wanted to do was take you upstairs and show you my collection of vintage My Little Pony dolls. One time I showed up, they had um, a sure house. And I always tell people, like, you got to live in the house for a while. It's got to create, like, an energy of, of life being lived in, you know, for it to work. But whatever, they hired me. I went to this Jersey Shore town. I go up to the condo door. I knock. And there's six guys, middle-aged white men, uh, all answer the door. It's like they're having this, I don't know, guys weekend or something. Uh, and like they hired me as a medium. And I come in and on the dining room table is this brown paper bag that they had pulled out all these VHS tapes, like home movies. <laughs> like, hmm, this is a gay orgy, right? It's a gay orgy again. Like, you, Come on now, it's a gay orgy. Just tell me. Just tell me that's what it is, you know? <laughs> Having men at my reading is kind of a rarity. Usually what happens as I'm pulling up to the house to do the reading, there's another car pulling out, which is the husband, you know, like they tell the husband to leave for whatever, two, three hours, and then I pull in, right? The neighbors are probably looking and they're like, okay, you know, Peggy is having six strange women over to her house. The husband left. And then 15 minutes later, this man pulls up, you know, and, and gets out. And he walks up to the door with a large bottle of water, uh, looking at his phone, putting it in his pocket and knocking on the door like, ooh. It would get to the point where it happens so often, whereas I'm pulling up and the husband's pulling out. I give him a little nod and a wink like, there you go. There you are, brother. It's me and you. Hey, hey. <laughs> you know, like happened all the time. One time early on, I ran this promotion. It was going to be like a contest. Uh, the winner would get me coming out to do a free group reading for you and five of your friends in your house. And the way I was going to word the contest, uh, here's me with the food thing again. Uh, email me uh, the dessert that you're going to cook or bake for me. And out of all the entrants, I'm going to pick the one that sounds the most tasty. And I'm going to come out and do a free group reading if you make me that dessert. <laughs> <laughs> right? Hey, it's a win-win, right? So I had narrowed it down to this decadent chocolate cake and uh, this limoncello pound cake. And I couldn't decide between the two. So I put my feelers out and I was like, all right, psychically, which one of these is going to be the more fun or like lead to something good? Uh, and I felt like the limoncello pound cake was the winner. So that's where I went, right? So the winner was this woman, Amy. Uh, and she lived in a town that I'd never been to before. So I was like, this might be cool, man. Like I drive up to this area, it might open up a whole new client base. Turned out to be pretty good. I went up to do the reading. The reading was great. Everyone was impressed. And actually, Amy owned and operated a day spa in that area. So she was like, maybe you can come and do a group reading at the day spa. We'll have a little package. We'll sell tickets. I'm like, all right, let's give it a try. But, uh, you know, me being me, I have to go and feel the space out, you know. So I set up a time, I drove up to the town and uh, walked in when the business was closed. She let me in and was like, now do what you got to do. I'm like, all right. So I stood in the space, closed my eyes. I'm like turning. I'm probably mumbling to myself. And she goes, you're not really human, are you? And I'm like, what, what gave it away? You know, what, what do you mean? <laughs> like, yeah, it's true, right? And it's funny because I do the group reading. Uh, and it was like 10 people I think we could fit in there. Uh, and one of the women uh, in the group of 10, I was having a problem uh, bringing through her father. Like she kept asking for her father and I couldn't get him. By the end of it, I had like cleaned out all the other spirit messages that belonged to everybody else. And it's like winding down. She's like, could we try and get my father? I'm like, all right. And I got to go into this deep trance. You know, it was like they were pulling me further and further out of the, I don't know, earthly reality. It's like this guy wasn't even hanging around anymore. 
I'm like, man, they're really going far out. It felt like I was going out of the solar system. You know, it's like that um, scene from 2001 where the guy in the spaceship goes through the monolith. And it's like this vortex of hyperspace or something, you know? That's what it felt like. And I finally find him and I'm like, he's hanging out with these other kinds of spirits that are more like him. I'm trying to describe it. And I'm like, your father is one of them. He went back to like his home planet, his home reality dimension there's like these spirits none of them have been incarnated as humans before but they have had experiences in different i don't know dimensions realities it's like they're aliens they don't look like spaceship aliens you know they're like angel aliens or something uh so i'm like does this make sense she goes uh, this is so perfect. My my dad, his whole life, he talked about how he didn't belong on planet Earth. He was obsessed with UFOlogy and aliens. He watched all the movies, read the books. Um, it is completely perfect that you're saying what you're saying. It makes absolute sense to me. And I just file it under the X-Files and let it go, you know? But since we're telling crazy stories here, I might as well include them here. Why not, you know? Those messages always stood out, you know, when I was saying at the beginning, like, I don't remember everything that I say. Well, yeah, I'm going to remember things that I file away under the X-Files, you know what I mean? Those are just weird. What does it even mean? I don't know. There was another reading where I brought through a younger guy one time, and I guess he was like a real curious soul. So um, he had to tell everybody in the group, like, man, you know all the questions that you have about the universe? Well, they're answered when you come over. And I got to tell you, aliens are real and they're right there. I can't believe you guys don't see them. They're right there. Hey, how about this one? I'm in a reading one time. Uh, it's a group reading, private, in-home. Uh, and this woman brought, I think, her mother-in-law. And her mother-in-law was from Ireland, and she still had the accent and everything. And I'm telling her about her grandmother in spirit, like from Ireland, and how she's um, showing me the kitchen that they grew up in. She was like, oh, at twilight hours, the first thing you have to do in the kitchen is open up that window, you know, at dawn and at dusk, uh, because that's how you let the little people out. And as I'm talking about it, I'm like, she's not saying it like in a superstitious religious way. She means like they're real, that literally the little people that are like, and I'm seeing them in the reading, like, like she's friends with them, like she's talking to these little people and they're real in, the, in my mind's eye. They're real in her grandmother's eyes. They were real. And I'm telling her this and she's like, oh, sure. Yeah, the little people. And I was like, well, yeah, but that's like like a superstition, right? That's like fictional. And she's like, oh, no, it's not. Oh, no. And this woman straight up believed in it. Now, it looked real to me before she even validated it. But then she validated it that she believed in it herself, too. Does belief make it real? Are, are little people real? I don't know, man. Here's another one for you. Talk about the X-Files while I'm onto it. I'm in a reading in Wilmington, Delaware, and I'm talking to this guy, bringing through his messages and everything, and he's, he goes, can I ask you a question? I said, sure, man, I'm open to questions. He goes, what does my cat see in this house? My cat keeps running around chasing things. I go, oh, okay, let me look. I'm thinking it's going to be like his grandfather or something in spirit. And I go, um... This is going to sound crazy, but there are little miniature people in your house and they follow you. They look like people, but they're only like six inches tall <laughs> and your cat is like running around chasing them and they're having all this like fun playtime at your cat's expense. Look, you know what I'm talking about because you were like out of it in a hospital. I don't know if you were like... Uh, under anesthesia, or maybe you were like sort of just weary from medication, but you you saw these little people. So I'm not the first to tell you this. And he goes, man, that is crazy you're saying this. I never told anybody this. I thought it was just the medication, but I was in surgery. And when I came out of it, I sat there for an hour looking on my chest as these two little people were like sword fighting. And I just watched them. I watched them for like an hour. And I just thought I was hallucinating until you just said that and reminded me of it. What's it mean? I don't know. Crazy though, right? File that under the X-Files. I know that what I do can be a hard sell for some people. So I try not to go into the X-Files too much, you know? But there's like weird things in there, man. I've told women who have lost a child that the child was never meant to be born because they're like an angel. 
and they're not meant to be human, and that if they were born, they would develop emotional ties to other souls, and it would draw them into this human karma of like reincarnation cycles, but they don't want that. They only want to be an angel, but in order to like be the guardian angel of, for example, uh, some woman that's sitting with me, her daughter, this guardian angel needed to get into like the mother's body and tune into the physical, and then it would be like, Okay, now I know how to always tune in where that daughter is because I was once born from the same, you know, womb that the daughter will eventually be born from. That just sounds crazy, right? But I guess it brought the person hope. It's like, what's the science behind this thing, right? Like crazy. I don't even understand it, but I, I've said some weird things to people over the years, you know? One time when I was at that day spa, I had been dealing with this diverticulitis issue. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's like intestinal polyps, I guess. So it depends on what you eat, but it could kind of seize it up and then, ooh, you got the runs, you know. Well, I had stopped to get my traditional, you know, salad because you have to eat light before reading. And we did this day spa ticketed reading, you know, it's like 10 people. Uh, I think I did it like four or five times there, you know. But this one time, I remember showing up and the people are there and they're ready and I'm going to meditate and I'm hearing the rumblings. And I'm like, ooh, this is going to go for like another two or three hours. I can't just get up and like break trance. All right, just go through it, you know. Boy, I soldiered forward. By like two and a half hours in, I'm like wrapping it up. I am squirming in the chair, you know. And I'm like, man, all right, people are like, thank you so much. Can I give you a hug? I'm like, hold that thought really quick. And I run back to the bathroom, you know. I'm like, hopefully nobody heard me. I'm back there for probably like six, seven minutes. And I come out, I'm like, okay, we're better now, you know. Oh, they heard you all right. You sounded like amateur night at the alligator rodeo. All right, enough of that guy. We'll be back next Monday with stories from real people. How about that? So uh, there was this one, it was a local reading, right? I go do the reading, you know, six people, do my spiel. Like I said, the four out of five that work, I don't really remember too much. So this is one of those. It was a really stellar reading. I got great messages, great details. Everyone was very impressed. But it was a little earlier. It was like a one o'clock reading which gave me time to meet up with my cousin for dinner. So I go over to this place, the Rio Station. It's a local restaurant, like kind of bar tavern. We sit on the bar side, you know, the high top tables and everything. And uh, me and my cousin are having dinner and I'm like, yeah, I just got out of a reading earlier. What are you up to? And over at the bar is a guy from the reading, you know? And I'm like, holy shit, I was just reading that guy today. He's sitting up at the bar with his back to us, but he's talking to a woman friend and he's got a notebook and he's talking to her about this notebook and I see him talking. So I go up to him and I'm like, hey man, what's up? I just was reading you, you know, what, what are you guys doing? And they look at me totally, completely spooked. The lady, I thought she was almost going to pass out. And he explains to me that he had his notes from the reading and he was telling his friend about the experience. Like this guy said this, oh my gosh. And then he said this and they're going over it and she's really impressed. So she's like, how do I contact this guy? And he's like, oh, he gave me a business card. Here it is. Now I don't have my phone number or email on the business card. It all goes through the website. I learned that the hard way when I would get random phone calls in the middle of the night by desperate people looking for psychic advice. Like I can't do that. I don't want my phone ringing all day long. So anyway, so the business card, it has, you know, psychic media, my picture, and the website. You got to all go through the website. So she, she gets the business card off of him and she's like, there's no way to contact him. Like, what is that about? He goes, oh, I didn't notice that. She goes, there's no phone number or nothing. What's he, you're just supposed to think about him and he appears? And I walked up and I go, hey guys, what's up? They like, right in that moment, can't make this stuff up. They were totally spooked. They must think I'm like Merlin the Wizard or something, some kind of ridiculous, like, Jedi knight. Like, I, I, you were thinking of me? You rang? Like, that must have spooked them so much, man. I was in a reading one time. I'm like in the middle of channeling someone's, I don't know, relative. I'm like mid-message. And I turn over to my right and I turn to this person. I go, yo, Chinese food. That does sound good. And she was like, uh, she had been thinking like, what are we going to order after this reading? Crazy, like freaked her out. She's like, oh my God, I was just thinking that. I'm like, yeah, I could hear you thinking it. 
All right, I got one more in me, right? What time we got here? Okay, I got one more in me. So, all right, how about this? We started out talking about the uh, woman that was stoned and her princess cat. Uh, I'll come full circle with another one. I'm in Elkton, Maryland. Talk about a drive. I'm in Elkton, Maryland. I show up to do the reading, and uh, it's a group of people. There's a can of Budweiser sitting over on the table next to this guy in, like, a, a lounge chair, you know? He's, like, reclined back. I'm like, how many beers is this dude had to drink? The, oh, yeah, he only had the one. Like, All right, you know my thing with alcohol, but we're going to soldier through, man. It, I could still maybe come up over the top and get the energy of the room going. It works sometimes, you know? Let's, let's give it a go. I mean, I'm all the way in Elkton, Maryland, so let's give it a shot here. So I'm in the reading, and at one point along the course of the reading, I go over to the guy, and I'm like, I have your father here? And he's like, no, my father's living. I'm like, no, it's for you, though. It's a father figure, so it could be, like, only one generation older. I don't think it's an uncle, though. It would be, like, a stepfather or a father-in-law. Hmm, he's not saying anything. I'm like, all right, this guy passed to something in the brain like it's a, a stroke or brain cancer, something in his brain, it was pretty sudden. So I'm thinking it's like a, a really bad stroke, like a very extreme stroke. Um, anybody that you know passed this way, a man in spirit that passed of a really bad stroke? And he's like, well, my father-in-law passed that way. And I'm like, okay, yeah, father figure. That's what I'm saying. All right, well, listen, that guy is here and he's talking about you have to keep the house. And he's like, who's talking about that? I'm like, the father. And he's like, my father's still living. I'm like, wait, what, the the guy with the stroke. The, you just said the guy with the stroke. And he's like, huh? I'm like, do you know anybody with a stroke? And he's like, my father-in-law passed of a stroke. And I'm like, well, that's the guy. That's the guy that's saying it. This is what I'm talking about. This guy is telling you to keep the house, that you have to keep this. Don't sell the house. And he's like, who's saying that? I'm like, the father guy. And he's like, my father's still living. I'm like, wait a second. What are we doing right now? The guy was completely baked. He had smoked so much weed before I showed up that he couldn't even follow the reading. He was like, every 20 seconds, we're in a time loop here. Like, what are we doing? This is, this is crazy. This is, there's no way this is going to work, man. What the hell? Oh, goodness. You live and learn, folks. You know, like I said, there's 8 billion different people on this planet. It's a wild safari, our planet Earth, man. You never know what you're walking into. Trying to get everybody on the same page as me, personality-wise, energy-wise, I don't know. It's a crapshoot, man. It's a dice roll. You never know what you're going to get. Eventually, all this running around and trying and trying, you know, like it starts to take a toll on me. I start to get a little burned out. The more it's taken a toll on me, the less readings can work, right? Because now I'm just getting tired of it. Like, I can't, I can't do it. This one's too much. I'm going to throw in the towel, you know? And then it's like it all kind of compounds, you know? It gets crazy. Maybe we'll get into that in the next episode. But uh, all right. Anyway, this brings us to the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I didn't include any uh, people's stories this time because I just felt like I wanted to, I don't know, share my stories, talk about my stuff. I mean, gosh, I'm probably leaving out so many good stories. These are just the ones that came to me now, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I love the idea that somebody out there is listening to this and getting something out of it. Uh, you know, so I always enjoy the feedback. If you want to hit me up, uh, you can email me. That's on my website at scottedwardhenry.com. Uh, you can check me out on Facebook or Instagram at Scott Edward Henry. Uh, and also, don't forget, I'm putting up bonus content for every episode, right? You can go back and look like, there's uh, my mom's disco song from episode one. And there's book links. There's uh, videos. If you liked my Aunt Madge, you could check out her cream puff recipe. You know, I got all kinds of cool bonus content up there. Check all that out at rippleroadpod.com. Rippleroadpod.com. Uh, and like I had said before, you know, we're coming up close to the time where it's like current time. And then what am I going to do? Boy, I set this whole thing up, right? So it's like going to come to this end. I guess we're going to just call it season one. Um, but it would be nice to take a little break, you know. I want to get back into doing some uh, artwork frames for my girlfriend, Elise. Uh, you know, I like building uh, these crazy huge wooden frames for her. I'd like to get some time in on the wood shop, you know. Maybe I'll take a couple of weeks break or however long. But I bring this up because um, if I do come back up with a new project, 
project or a season two type of thing, uh, you might want to check that out. It, I don't know how you're going to get notified. You're going to have to go on to your little app there that you listen to and like click on the subscribe, click on the follow, you know, receive notifications. And that way, when I'm back up and running, your phone will give a little notification that I'm back up. Otherwise, you might miss out. I might be telling some more crazy stories. Oh, goodness gracious. So anyway, thank you again for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back next Monday with another episode. In the meantime, have a good rest of your day. Have a good rest of the week. Uh, Enjoy the wild safari of planet Earth. And uh, be cool. Thank you.